We're here with Chad Borman, and he's a sales manager with Global Environmental Products, or at NPE 2016. And uh, we're going to talk about, and Chad is going to tell us about, Global's M4 HSD, uh, which stands for High Side Debris Discharge. And we'll see what that is talking about. So. Thanks, Chad. Tell Thank us you. About it. Thank you, Ranger. I appreciate you giving us an opportunity to uh, take you around the, the Global M4 HSD. Follow me over. I'll All right. Uh, kind of introduce you to the machine and some of the special features that Global can bring to the table. Um, first and foremost, as you can see, this looks a bit more uh, unique than you're going to see on most full size. Uh, commercially mounted mechanical street sweepers. All right, look One, at all that glass to see how exactly. visibility is huge on these. It's, it's a great point. Um, we, we obviously fabricate our own cab, chassis, everything in-house out in San Bernardino, California. The door itself, we extend the glass from top to bottom for the best visibility to the curb line that you're going to get on any type of a sweeper. And then obviously very unique and, and something that we can do because we are building this chassis on our own is we actually uh, put the operator right in the center position of the cab. So typically when you have your commercial trucks, and, and Global does offer commercial truck chassis uh, type sweepers, so we take nothing away from that. Uh, but when you get those trucks, you're typically adding the, the left or the right hand steering, depending on the chassis you're putting it into. Global's unique feature is you've got one steering wheel, one set of controls. Uh, operator never has to jump seats to see what's going on on the left or the right hand side. Um, the unique design helps us to retain the, you know, the cab over design as chassis are constantly changing. We're, we're the cab over truck. We just had an article uh, a couple months ago by uh, a public works uh, gentleman, and he talked about, he was a safety guy in ergonomics, and he talked about the importance of ergonomics and chassis and the fact that so many sweepers, uh, the operators are not in correct uh, chassis because they're stuck with whatever the you know, the, the big industries are doing with those chassis, so yep. that, that can uh, really be a huge factor. You know, something that was brought to my attention, you and I, unless we're sweeping in these things every day, we don't realize, you get into a truck that has primary left-hand steering with the, with the right-hand steering added, let's picture the pattern of how those windshield wipers actually work. They're actually built so that the left-hand primary steering has the full visibility, and on the right-hand side where a, a typical operator would sit, his visibility is cut off. Okay, you never take that into account. Well, these guys do it. They have to do this. Yeah. It's gone. You get into this machine. I just take that off the table. But it's yeah. little things like that. You and I aren't. We're not going to. We take don't up. think about that exactly. without, uh, without having somebody like yourself tell us. That's, so, that's right. And, and, and we learn it from the people on the street. So, yeah. um, obviously, again, going back to the dedicated purpose-built chassis, something else that it gives us the ability to do building these things in house is I've been able to, to actually maintain a nice short wheelbase, okay? Mm -hmm. So this truck actually does meet all federal motor vehicle safety standards. It will run down the interstate at 65 miles per hour. We do have disc brakes all the way around. Uh, I mean, this could be sold with, with anything on it. It will meet all motor vehicle regulations. However, because we design our own package, I'm able to keep the 131 inch wheelbase, which gives me ultimately an 18 and a half foot turning radius, okay? Mm -hmm. So as the emissions are changing, we have to meet those. I'm not, I'm not doing anything differently than anybody else is on the commercial side, I can package it differently. I don't have to take that, mount it behind the cab and push the street sweeper back on the frame. I can actually take it and we'll go to the back, I'll open it up and show you. I can go up with it, I can go around the engine, I can do whatever I need to do to keep this package. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so obviously a big advantage is center steering and a guy can actually turn in a cul-de-sac 18 and a half foot and, and it's not changing. Mm -hmm. Big advantage we're getting today. Something else um, with these truck chassis, or with this with this type of chassis versus a commercial truck chassis, you're going to notice where my main broom is located. Okay, and this is a big, big deal when it comes to actually sweeping and how effective I am when I sweep. I can talk all day long about making a nice, you know, right hand, left hand turn, but naturally, when you make these right hand and left hand turns, geometry is going to shift to where. You know, that broom's gonna slide instead of continue bringing the material into the side broom, and you'll see that swath of material that's left. Nature of the beast. It is absolutely the, the nature of the beast with a mechanical sweeper. However, where we take our main broom and have the ability to tuck it up right into the center of the machine, mm -hmm. we're in much closer proximity to the side brooms, and I don't get that side motion nearly to what you're gonna get with a commercial truck with a main broom mounted after frame. I can do this. Keep in mind, Global's building a truck with a hydrostatic transmission. I don't have a drive shaft running through a truck frame that will interfere with putting a main broom right in the center. I'm not trying to fit a sweeper to the truck. I'm building the sweeper. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's a big, big advantage that we get with this type of machine, you know, the, the sweep ability. Next thing that you're going to get with the location of this main broom is I'm not transferring from the side brooms and then waiting for that main broom to catch up before I actually lift it. As soon as I bring that material in from the side brooms, I'm at the main broom carrying it straight up into my elevator mechanism. Everything is nice, tight, and compact, okay? Now, Global uses a unique design on our elevator mechanism. We call this an overthrow type design. So the main broom will actually sweep the material up onto what I would I, I'd consider like a dustpan. Mm -hmm. And our elevator mechanism comes around, it'll grab that material and overthrow into the hopper. Okay. okay. Something that we've designed into this build, and, and this has been, it's a very, very, very nice feature. Something we've designed into this is instead of ultimately increasing the speed of our elevator, which obviously the faster you're running that elevator, the faster parts wear out, the louder the machine operates, etc., etc. We have the ability to slow the elevator because as the material comes up and is thrown into the hopper, I have a second load mechanism in here called a load leveling device. Because what this load leveling device is doing is if you picture the, uh, the wheel on a steamboat, the paddle wheel on a steamboat, it looks very similar to that. Any time that the gutter brooms are turning on the Global M4 HSD, the paddle wheel inside or the load leveler in inside is also rotating. So now that material, no matter how fast I run my elevator, will come in, hit this paddle, and that's what's moving the load. That's what's throwing it to the back. If I take this in against any commercial truck mounted machine, and I ask them how they shift their load on a day-to-day -day basis, they're gonna tell you that they slam on the brakes. And that's how the load shifts. I'm not doing that. I saw the uh, video of that uh, on a computer here before you uh, came over, and I must say it's very impressive. It's yeah, well, thank it is. you. It's thank worth you. Uh, going to your website and taking a look at that. Very, very, very unique feature, and, and it's it working well in all applications. Okay, and in doing so, believe it or not, with Global's with the Global Design on um, the load leveling mechanism, it's slowing the elevator like we do. I believe I'm the only company right now that's actually offering a two-year, two-thousand-hour guarantee on our elevator belts and elevator sprockets because I can run it slower. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So a big yeah. advantage we're getting. You bet. Uh, obviously, you see coming up the elevator, the material's loading into the hopper. This is a high side dump machine, just like uh, just like Ranger had said at the beginning. This is that's unique to. I don't want to say it's unique. That's new to Global's design okay. because Global for years has done the, the standard M4, which was a high rear dump. We knew to enter you know the contractor market like we're primarily targeting here at, at NPE. We needed the ability to dump into a dump truck off of the side of the machine, and that's that's the doors that the HSD has opened up to us. We can actually bring this into the contractor market now and dump off of the side. Something that we can do that I don't see the other guys doing though, because I take my operator, I put him right in the center of the cab. I can choose to dump off of the right-hand side or the left-hand side. Typically, people are dumping off the right-hand side because your operator sits on the right-hand side. Do you want to be able to see that? Mm -hmm. When I build the machine at Global, you tell me which side you want to, you want to dump from, and we build it to that configuration because I'm sitting right in the middle of the cab. Gotcha. I see everything on both sides. Okay. Mm -hmm. A feature of that would be if, if I've got the sweeper up against the curb line and I'm sweeping, I don't have to pull away from the curb line to dump in the truck. The truck can pull up next to me and I just dump off, off the left side. Mm -hmm. How high can we go up? Uh, 120 inch dump height. So, okay. so basically um, I'm yet to find any like standard tandem axle dump truck that we can't get into. Okay. That's the important part. My overall hopper capacity is 5.2 cubic yards. Uh, my usable capacity, I think, will exceed anybody out there with the help of my load leveling mechanism. Okay, so we are literally filling probably to a true four and a half cubic yards is what we're, is what we're estimating. Right. So much to the point that when we were testing the loads and we were putting it on the scales, uh, we were concerned about weight on the axles. We've actually increased our axle weight ratings because of the amount of material that we're, we're carrying in this hopper, and, and uh, we meet all axle weight ratings with this thing. Sounds like a win-win. It's a good thing. So, coming back, if you follow me, and this, this is a big selling feature that Global has, if I take this into a city or I take it into a contractor and they have their mechanics that are working on site and doing their own, their own maintenance work on these type of machines, the one thing that I can always impress them with is the accessibility. Street sweepers have a lot of moving parts and, and you're going to work on a street sweeper. Because what we're trying to do is build it in such a fashion that without climbing on top or on you know below the machine, we can access everything. So obviously with my hopper in the air, my safety props in up front, I gain full access to my elevator and my engine at the front. But I can also come back here 
swing my oil cooler out of the way, have full access to my water pumps, I've got my DEF tanks, I've got my after treatment and exhaust system, access to the engine. Uh, you know, on this side I've got hydraulic filters, we can access everything from the back. These are my hydraulic towers, check my oil levels in the back. Very, very simple. Nice and clean. Nice and clean. Um, you're going to notice the water tanks are actually mounted down below the engine. We do this for, uh, for stability. It's, they're two split tanks. The total water capacity is 280 gallons. And, uh, so you have uh, 140 on each? It's 140 with the transfer tube in between, so I actually would just fill on one side of the machine and it'll okay. fill to both. And, and just to show, there's, a, there's one of the tanks, I don't know if we can see that in the video, we've got to take the tank over on this side. And then you're going to notice, too, actually I close this up a bit prematurely, but you'll notice our water pumps are actually located down here, so um, the operator does have the ability from within the cab to operate one or both water pumps depending on how dusty the application is. We're trying to get as much life out of the 280 gallons as we possibly can. Um, in addition to that, if I opened up the cab and I showed you, you're going to see three ball valves or four ball valves depending on how it's equipped to where they can actually turn a ball valve on at each the gutter room, left or right hand side, front spray bar and elevator. If you don't need it, you turn it off and save the water. That's okay. Something else that I brushed on just very quickly is the fact that we do have disc brakes all the way around on this machine. Um, is where that's unique, and actually I've had a lot of mechanics that have commented on this. So it's, it's something else that we don't think about, right? Um, if I do have the shoe and drum brakes on the rear, like a typical commercial truck will have, and then I take my main broom and I mount it after frame, all the rock, debris, chip seal, anything you're picking up is actually thrown at those rear wheels and at the elevator. And over time, it will happen where a rock or something will get into those, those, shoe, those shoe brakes and actually chew them up. Global, I can stay away from that. My main broom is ahead of that, and I'm disc brakes all the way around regardless. Okay. All right. So another big advantage. Yeah. Accessibility, guys, I want to I want to continue on this. Um, basically, all of our hydraulic manifolds that control any of the sweep gear are located in the side panel. So the old machines, old, old machines, when, you know, the product evolves. Everyone knows this. And if I took this machine into a guy that operated a machine 20 years ago, he would tell me why, you know, I had this, this, and this issue. I can go to him today and I can say, okay, all those points you just brought up have been addressed. And one of the main issues that they had in the past is this whole block that you would see under here that is now in the left fender, at one time was actually mounted below the hopper by the elevator. Right. Poor operator couldn't do anything about cleaning that machine and all the water and dirt and debris falling down on those, those coils, relays, etc. and they would fail was not his fault it was a design issue so we have actually gone ahead we've moved all that out to the fender this isn't new we've done this now for a number of years um, ultimately uh, New York City is the largest customer that Global has uh, New York City actually drove this redesign it proved efficient it works so we've taken it across the board everything is out here mechanics like it they're not climbing underneath they're not raising the hopper you open the side panel and you access it address the issue put it back to work okay. Okay. One of the last key features that I'd really like to show, and I think again this goes back to serviceability, is uh, if, if, if I had the luxury of bringing you out to our factory today, Ranger, and giving you a tour of the facility, the first thing that I'm going to do when we show you the construction of this machine is I'm going to show you this box as a standalone, and this is our electrical box, okay? We go out the back door, we outfit this entire electrical panel to whatever options and features you're, the customer's asking for on this machine. We build this box, this box goes on a cart, and literally every stage of the rest of this machine being built, that cart will follow that machine out the door. Truly building the machine around the box, okay? So I open this up, you're gonna notice the dedicated electrical panel. The one thing that we are absolutely trying to avoid with this machine is spreading these electrical components out across the machine. Um, we're one of the only companies I'm aware of where we're running all of our grounding back to copper strips in this box. Oh. Um, you know, we're not grounding anywhere on the frame. We powder coat the unit. I don't want to powder coat it, then grind through it, ground to the frame, and then over time, start to chase grounds. Yeah. So we do actually take all of that and we run it back up to this box. We've got the two doors. We're trying to keep everything as clean and sealed as we possibly can. Okay, nice mm -hmm. and dry and clean. Um, today we utilize electronic engines. 
pretty much everybody is. We do have an ECM that's coming off the unit here, and it actually communicates with another ECM at the back. One thing that these ECMs have allowed with this one communicating to the one in the back is we've been able to remove a lot of individual wiring and go to like a multiplex wiring. Sure. And we can, we can basically diagnose point A or point B. Okay. okay, so it's kept everything nice and clean. We color code and hot stamp like anybody else does. Uh, we minimize splicing anywhere throughout the system. Uh, relays are interchangeable, so today if if I get a phone call from a customer that said for some reason my main broom isn't coming down, I can take him to the panel and say, look, take the relay out of the horn, put it in the main broom. Okay, it dropped, not a problem. You have a bad relay, we're gonna send one in to you, replace it at the horn. Little things like that, they're all taken into account for the guys. This machine's useless if it's not on the road working. So we do everything we can to keep it on the street. Okay. And then lastly, one of the one of the big, big design changes that we've actually made, and again, it's just the revolution. We've taken it across the board on all of our four-wheel machines today, okay? So we've taken the radiator that used to be mounted in the back, where I had that oil cooler that I swung out so you could see the engine. You had a, you had a radiator and an oil cooler stacked together. Over time is what was happening because the fan on that engine is a pusher fan. Dirt and dust and debris would come up from underneath the sweeper, no way to avoid it, and eventually you may sandblast that radiator, okay? So now, something that they've done, and engineering put a lot of work and effort into, and it's working very, very well, is we've removed the radiator from the back of the machine entirely. That's just an oil cooler back there. And your radiator is actually set behind the front bumper. This is a self-cleaning radiator. We're getting forced air through. We can actually uh, downsize the overall size of the radiator itself. And if I actually crawled up underneath and I took a look, you're going to see two hydraulic fans running back there. Every hour for one minute, those fans will automatically reverse themselves and blow the, the radiator clean so you have a self-cleaning radiator on the machine. Very impressive. It's, it's been, been very good. But those are, uh, I think, most of the key features. If you had any questions that I could ever answer for you, Andrew, let me know. Anybody out there watching this video, please get a hold of us. Uh, again, we're Global Environmental Products based in San Bernardino, California. Phone number is 909 713 1600 and please come see us at www.globalsweeper.com thank you very much thank you Jim